Hello everyone, General Hanger Nade back. Uh, this is an uh, update number two from the spring offensive in, in Prince George, British Columbia that's happening next month, uh, March 21st, 22nd, 23rd, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I uh, just wanted to let you all know that, uh, that uh, we're not taking any more players. We have a dozen players right now. Let me just uh, pull something up here. I want to Okay, so yeah, we have a dozen players already, and we don't want any more than that um, because we don't want people to come up here and be bored. Uh, if we were to put more than six people on a table, then you know, like you'd be oh, okay. I get to play Anzac, right? You know, you just travel two thousand miles just to play Anzac for the weekend. You know, <laughs> and, yeah, I I wouldn't want to do that. So, um, uh, but we got a really good mix of people uh, from different places. So we got four local people. Right. And then we got uh, four Americans. We've got two from Montana, one from California, one from Michigan. And then we got two from BC, um, other parts of BC. So one of them's Hilltop Pillbox there. And, and another one from Vancouver. And uh, we've got a couple from Alberta, one from Grand Prairie and one from Edmonton. Um, you're all familiar with Rank Carcass. He's been to my place a few times before. Uh, to play uh, in the war room and I've been to his place as well <laughs> the, the cat house <laughs> anyway so we're really happy we've, we've got all the players and I've spoken to let me just see I think I've spoken to all of them this weekend except for one of the local guys but he is a roommate uh, with Panzer King so Panzer King just you know he just passes on everything that him and I talk about and him and I must have talked about 60 times this weekend trying to whittle this thing all down uh get it just right the way we want it so what we've done we've everybody already knows who they're going to play and what what table they're going to be on and uh what expansion sets we're playing we wanted everybody to know early and that's why also we why we wanted to cut this thing off early is is so that people um knew what they were going to be doing and could prepare for that right um if some of the players uh want to uh, talk to their their uh, partners in, in that they've never met before, then I'll pass on their information to each other and they can do that, right? So they can discuss that strategy. But they know that, they know what expansion sets we're playing and, and uh, so it gives them time to go over the rules and um, and try to get familiar with the new rules. Now we've, we've uh, kept the expansion sets down to a minimum. Uh, because first of all, um, this is a, a new rule set and it's coming out this week. <laughs> yes, it is. Yay. Finally, it's, um, it's been a little bit late, but that's just because, uh, that's the way it is. You know, like if you wanted a crappy product, you could have got it a month ago, but if you wanted to wait and get a good product, then it's coming out this week. I just spoke to Doug today and, and the maps, he gets the maps on Tuesday and then he's sending them out. So, you might send them out Wednesday or Thursday or whatever. Like you're getting, uh, you're you're getting your mail sent out this week with uh, with your pre-orders. Uh, anyway, um, with that though, um, the players that are coming to this event have already got the rules. Uh, they haven't got the new rule book yet because it, um, none of us have got it yet. But I've sent the rules out to everyone just so that they can familiarize themselves with the rules. And I think that most of them are getting maps for. You know, like they've pre-ordered maps uh, anyway. Um, so they will be able to uh, to fool around with that. You know, like play a game or two, you know, in the next month before they get here to try to familiarize themselves with those rules. But also keep the expansion sets down to a minimum because they are playing with new rules. And, and, uh, and also they know early so that they can go over those rules. If it's not an expansion set they've played before or uh, maybe they've only played it once or twice, then they can familiarize themselves with the rules to that expansion set. And um, and the other thing is uh, time. Uh, for every expansion set you add, and players who play this game a lot with expansion sets will know what I'm talking about, every expansion set that you add is going to add time to your game. Um, and there's some that are really time intensive, like Partisans. Great set, but it adds a lot of time to every game. Uh, same with oil wars. Just because there's a lot of um, calculating, you know, with with, with sets like those, uh, a lot of rolling uh, with partisans, a lot of calculating, 
and and such with um, with oil wars. Like oil wars is really a, uh, a game within a game. You know what I mean? Um, but anyway, uh, if we had too many expansion sets, then um, it, it it gets kind of overwhelming, and we um, you're sitting down and having to read things over again and think about them and and then we're not done by monday right like we really wanted to get this done and you know like not done like at midnight monday we want to get it done a little bit earlier so that uh so that we can hand out the prizes and and things like that uh doug from historicalboardgaming.com is is kind enough to send us some really nice prizes uh he'll be sending those out this week with my map that i'm that i'll be getting and um and uh plus uh, Panzer King and I have also got some prizes that we're giving away. So between us and, and Doug, uh, these guys are going to get spoiled up here. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. I've had the opportunity to speak everybody to, to everybody on the phone this weekend that's coming. And everybody is so excited about getting here and meeting all the other people and playing the games. Um, like we're all just, you know, just woo -woo -woo. <laughs> I know, uh, uh, Panzer King, he, he won't leave me. Every time I look at my phone, I get another message. It's like, leave me alone, dude. I'm trying to watch TV or something. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding, James. Like, but it, it's, uh, it's funny though. Like him and I are just so excited and, uh, we thought it was just us. And then we talked to these other guys and, and they're so excited to be, um, to be coming up here and, and, uh, to play in, in, in the lion's den and, and to meet all the other guys and lots of YouTubers are going to be there. Like, uh, aside from me and, and Panzer King, who's got a new channel now. And by the way, he just put out his second video yesterday. You might want to check that one out. That's, uh, just on his table. Like uh, the first one you might've seen it's on his uh, war room, but this one is just on his table, how it was built. And like he goes uh, underneath and, and shows you all kinds of stuff. Right. Um, and tells you about uh, how you can do it as well, right? Um, anyway, you, want, you might want to check that out and, and subscribe to his channel if you haven't already. But anyway, so us two, uh, Rank Carcass, he's a YouTuber. Uh, Hilltop Pillbox, he's a YouTuber. He's coming. Um, Pagan, if you haven't checked out Pagan's channel, go to Pagan. It's P-A-G-A-N. Uh, he's got some really good videos. He doesn't have many, but the videos that he has put out are really good. So he's going to be here. Um, he's coming up from the States and, um, so there'll be lots and lots of videos made up at this tournament or not, it's not really a tournament. We're, we're, we're not calling it a tournament. We're going to call it an event. A tournament would be where you move on and play the next team and things like that. Whereas we're playing it like two tables side by side, adding up the scores from the two tables. And that's how we're going to get a champion out of this. But, uh, everybody's going to get prizes and everybody's going to get medals, um, really cool medals too, uh, like first, second and third place medals. And, and, um, I can't imagine that, that you know, after we do this, that these guys aren't going to want to come back next year. Right. And who knows, maybe, maybe some more of you will want to come up next year as well. Um, and we'll have to get a bigger space and more tables, right. <laughs> you know, like, uh, get some of the guys that are driving here to bring their maps and games and everything, because that's not just something that you just throw out, you know, like a, uh, one of those maps is pretty expensive and more so than that, uh, the number of pieces that you need for one of the games is. So uh, next year and the year after that, if, if, if the, it, it expands, then we will be bringing in uh, other stuff so that people can play. Uh, but this year, we're just focused on this year and it's going to be a ton of fun just with the 12 of us um, on uh, two tables. Uh, so the expansion set we're says we're playing, we're playing Canada War, and uh, Jinx is going to be here. He's the guy that invented that set, so um, that's good. We just like Canada War. Like if, if if you haven't played that one yet, then you should because uh, it, it it really makes the the uh, war in the Atlantic really interesting. Um, and one of the things that we're going to do is um, the American player is going to play Canada. Uh, even like he's, they're going to play them like Canada is supposed to be played. So they will play with the UK, right? They'll attack and defend with the UK and go on the UK's turn and everything. But the Americans, they don't really get into the game for, uh, you know, probably the first half of the game anyway. They're just stuck in America and, uh, you know, just not much money even really. Their money is slowly starting to accumulate and everything. So by giving them Canada to play with, you know, aside from China, because they'll also have China to play with, it, it gives them something more to do, right? 
so anyway, that we're going to do that. We're going to have the Spanish Civil War set. Um, we're going to play Commanders because that's nice and easy, and it doesn't, like, it's nice and simple, right? And it, it, I, I like uh, Commanders because it makes things a little bit more interesting, but it doesn't make it um, longer or anything like that. Like, if we were to play Elite of the Reich or something like that, then you got the German player in the corner scratching his head when it's his turn, wondering what he should do next with all these, you know. Uh, we don't want that. Like, the awesome sets, a lot of great expansion sets that we're not going to play with just because they're going to slow us down. Um, in the future, you know, uh, once uh, people are, are quite familiar with the version 3 rules and things like that, then maybe we can throw a few more expansion sets in. We'll, uh, we'll talk with people that are coming to future events and and, uh, and see what people want to play. But this time we, we've kind of decided, uh, just James and I, um, Panzer King that is, that, uh, that we're going to decide this is what we're playing. And then the one other one that we're going to play is Turkey at War. Um, now that one isn't... Uh, isn't really a given because it's kind of swingy, you know what I mean? Like there's three factions and you all vie to get Turkey, and Turkey's pretty powerful, right? So the faction that gets Turkey, you would think would have a big advantage, right? But what we're going to do with the two tables, uh, both of them are going to play the same expansion sets. So if one of the tables, like let's say the Allies get Turkey on, uh, uh, on one of the tables, then all of a sudden on the other table that hasn't been given out yet, the allies are are no longer in in line to get Turkey. Um, it's between the common turn and the Axis at that point, and, or whoever gets it. Like if the common turn gets it, then it's between the Axis and the allies over who gets Turkey in the other table. Um, but I tell you though, like even though it's uh, it swings the game and and um, it it makes the game quite different around the Mediterranean, especially right. Uh, it makes the war in, uh, around the Middle Earth and the Mediterranean, much more interesting. Um, I've played the Turkey at War set three times now, and twice the, the 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 faction that got Turkey at War did not win the game. So only one out of, once out of the three times did the faction who got Turkey actually win the game. So it doesn't necessarily make you win the game to get that. It just makes the game more interesting. And we really love that set up here in Prince George, so we're going to throw that one in. Um, and that's it. That's all for the uh, the sets. There is another set that hasn't come out yet um, that I was talking with Doug about today. Uh, um, if, if he can get that set out in time or just even get the pieces made in time and, and get them to us, then we'll play that, that other set. But uh, um, I'm not counting on that, though, because, of course, he's really busy right now getting you your games and everything. That's the most important thing to him and, and to me as well. Um, I know how much I want my game, right? So uh, I can only imagine that everybody else feels the same way as me. Um, he's, uh, he, he's pretty excited about uh, the bigger map, just like I am. So he's going to have to get him a big table because he doesn't have anything at HBG that is big enough to put the the five by ten map on. So he's going to try to get set, you know set up a bunch of stuff so that he can set the map out and, and do a video for you guys and everything to show you what that big map uh, looks like. I wish that that I had a place uh, in my house that I could do, but my house is pretty small. I live alone, so I don't need a big fabulous house, right? The only room I could put it in is the one I'm sitting in now, and then you know then I don't have a living room. <laughs> People come over and what's this table all about, right? You know, um, so you know, I've got other things involved in my life as well. So, uh, you know, like the room that I'm in, there's just no way. You've seen the war room, and there's no way I could possibly fit that table in and still walk around it, right? So, um, but yeah, if you if you have the room, then definitely you want that big map. It's going to be awesome, and uh, I know the game is awesome. The rule set uh, is so much better than the version 2 rules and the version 2 rules are uh, a big step up from global 40 you know so um but version 3 just it just looks like the uh, uh, a game that has been developed longer than version 2 you know what i mean like somebody played version 2 for a few years and then decided to make it better exactly that's, that's exactly what's happened right and so i think that people are going to be very very happy with it it's uh, a much better game um, the cost structure, that's something that's going to be difficult to, uh, 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 to wrap your head around, you know, because 
before the you, you there was the build queue right and there was four stages to that build queue and um now that there's only going to be three stages to that build queue but uh that doesn't mean that they're going to up the costs uh for each stage like a battleship before was uh five 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 you paid five dollars or five ipp four times right well it's only going to be five 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 now it's not going to be seven 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 so battleships uh the things that you would uh, buy on that uh, thing and they're basically the ones that you've seen before right um that were on there before except for the new units right so those kind of things those big ticket items are going to be cheaper to buy and uh that's going to make the game uh, better I think um, because you'll be able to afford some of these big ticket items right and because those are more affordable then you're going to be able to afford some more of the other things um, that was one of the problems that I had with version 2 was that uh, it um, like you, you spend all this money like your money real money on all of these pieces to get everything you need to play this game and then some of those pieces never see the light of day <laughs> just because you couldn't afford in the game to purchase them right uh but i think that that they did a really really good job of, of fixing that like i when i got the rules and i read them I thought, holy crap i never would have thought of that that's awesome <laughs> so you know i'm really thrilled with uh with the way the rules have turned out in this uh uh and also the other things that you used to spend money on like you, you used to spend two dollars to roll the dice for tech well you don't spend two dollars anymore to roll that dice uh, so that's more money that you have to spend on units. Uh, instead, you're going to be um, getting a free roll for every major factory that you own, right? So uh, that's going to encourage you to, A, make sure you have as many major factories as you can, uh, can afford to put on the board. And B, uh, it's going to make you want to strategically bomb other people's major factories because those major factories have to be in, in good repair, like no damage whatsoever in order for you to be able to roll the dice from that factory, right? So uh, I just know the games that I've played, nobody's really put a whole lot of stock into uh, bombing factories. And when they did, people thought, well, I got other factories, you know, I'm, um, I'm just not gonna repair that factory, <laughs> you know? And that's the way it's gone, right? So this is gonna kind of force you to, to do that, to, to upgrade your factories and to strategically bomb other people and to repair your damage, right? Um, and in, in that way, um, you're going to get those free dice rolls to get the tech. And the tech as well, uh, it's going to be easier to get because rather than going four stages to get your tech, it's only going to be three stages. So it's going to be cheaper for you, uh, not as many rolls, you know, like it, so, but there's time, been times before I might roll ten times and still not get the damn thing, right? because you needed to get four of something, like four, eight or more, or nine or more, right? So now only three of them, that makes a big difference, right? You're not gonna be spending as much money on tech. And then repairing capital ships, you're not gonna spend money on that anymore either. Um, you're just going to spend a slot at your, uh, at your shipbuilding yard. Like, so you, if you've got a major shipyard, and uh, um, so you can build five ships there, well, if you want to repair one capital ship, then you repair the one capital ship. Now you can build four ships there. You could repair two capital ships and build three ships there. Or if you just had a minor shipyard and you can only build one ship, well, then rather than building a ship, you could fix your uh, capital ship. And the same thing with dockyards, too. Like, they, there's major and minor dockyards. So that's where you, you could also repair your capital ships. Uh, but you do have to get them back to that thing. And then at the start of your turn, then you repair those ships. Um, anyway, you're not spending, you're not rolling two dice, uh, two D6s, and uh, like I just remember being at the cat house in Edmonton there and, and have, rolling for three Japanese battleships, and it costed me $27 or 27 IPP to repair my capital ships. Like, where are you going to get that much money? Like, that's a whole turn's worth of money, right? So there's a whole turn I'm not going to be able to buy anything. Um, anyway, problem solved. Um, totally, totally love the, the rules that they come up with. Those are, that's just scratching the surface of the new rules. Um, so I'm really excited to get that game this week uh, or next week, you know, depending on how long it takes to get here. And I know you are too. 
Uh, I know you're going to be happy with the game when you get it. It's going to be a step up from the other game. Uh, the map is gorgeous. I've seen the map. It's just absolutely beautiful. Um, and I'm going to be doing a video series on how to play the game. It's not going to be like the last video series that I did on V2 on how to play the game. Um, I did that series as a novice. I said, hey, I don't know how to play this game. Let's figure it out together. And I made a lot of mistakes, right? Just as you would expect that I would. And I knew that I would, and I didn't care, right? Because I, I wanted you to not be as scared about getting the game um, like I was when I first got it. Like, it's it's pretty daunting, right? Well, I we just figured it out together, didn't we? <laughs> you know, That's how I did that video series. But this next video series, I'm going to make the video. And then I'm going to uh, show it to uh, one of the rules guys, uh, people that are experts on the rules at HPG. And they're going to say, yes, that's good. Or no, you made a mistake at 11 minute, 30 second mark. You know, uh, this is what was wrong. So then I'm just going to remake the whole video. And it's going to be totally 100% correct. Every one of the videos. And so it'll be like a whole video rule book. Um, I wish I could have started a month ago because... Um, I'm running out of time. I've got this event coming up with uh, my partner there, Panzer King, and um, it's, it's probably unlikely that I could do the whole video rule book uh, by the time I get my stuff and, and, and then, but uh, I will get it done as soon as possible. Um, so that'll be another resource that you have, aside from the nice rule books that they're making. It, I, it costs a lot of money to print out that many pages if you're doing it color, and you know, it's a beautiful rule book. So uh, it, it would be nice to have it in, in color and everything, but um, but uh, they're selling rule books, the ones you know with the circular bound and everything, so you can flip them right open and, and around and everything, so you're just looking at one page. So that would be, I think, cheaper to get them from HBG than it will be to uh, um, to print off yourself, unless of course you work at a place that has a printer and you don't have to pay for the ink. <laughs> You know, like if I tried to do that where I work, I'd probably get fired. So, you know, but uh, not everybody, like some people have that advantage. Some people can do that, right? Um, and so then, of course, then it'd be cheaper for you to just print out your own rule book. But anyway, um, can't wait to get it this week. But uh, so um, I've sent out emails to all of the players. So I'm just looking at the emails here. I've sent out emails to all of the players that are coming and uh, if you if you didn't get your email, uh, I'm talking right right now to the players that are coming. If you didn't get your email, then check your spam folder because uh, I already talked to uh, Panzer King, and uh, he said I didn't get. It. I said check your spam folder, and there it was, right? So uh, check your spam folder, and and uh, I know I sent it to everybody except for his roommate. So and um, so you should get those. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. So. From the living room of the General Hand Grenade, right on the couch. Take care, everyone. General Hand Grenade out.